be a hot topic and I am pumped and exciting. This is my present today on a Valentine evening. And if you're looking tonight, if you're watching this specific message tonight, it's by no accident because a lot of us, what we're going to talk about a lot of us in our relationships, in our marriages, uh, this has been a challenge for us. But guess what, guys? There is an answer and we're pumped and excited to share all the things that we share on these lives with Family Talk with Joel and myself is uh, things that we have had, challenges that we've had and we had with the help of God overcome a lot of these challenges so we are not just speaking from a intellectual side point because we don't have that but we're talking to you guys from experience and what works so exciting topic topic tonight is going to be sex and romance and what a perfect day joel to talk about something like this so welcome aboard guys share this with any lovers that are out there and just uh, relaxing um you know in your hotel room <laughs> or uh just at home or wherever you are around the world we are just pleased so pleased and, pl and and it's an honor and privilege to be able to spend this time with you and share this exciting information absolutely absolutely so go ahead thank you for first of all thank you you for spending a part of your Valentine's evening with us yes. as we discuss this topic tonight because we know that you could be doing a number of things but you're choosing to jump on here tonight and have a good time hopefully with your spouse by your side yeah. so that you can grow and add value to your relationship in this area you know a lot of times this is a topic that's overlooked in marriages yeah. and I must say to Sherilyn especially among believers yes, especially the among those yes. in the church that love the lord love yes, god yes. and this topic is shunned as if god didn't create Absolutely. this aspect of life right, right. for us to flourish and so Sherilyn and i don't want to be your, your your regular believers your regular teachers that shun and stay away from this topic because this is the very topic that will be a trap to bring your uh, your relationship to its own demise because right. it's overlooked and so yeah. tonight yes. we want to talk about it we want to talk about sex and romance because it's god's it's intention for you is the pleasure is the mystery is the most exciting gift that we get to take part in and experience um as being you um united as husband and wife so we're gonna dig in cooks Let's go. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And for those of you, if you weren't hearing us well just now, I forgot to plug in my volume. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so tonight, we are going to get on the road with this topic. Yes. And it's going to be an exciting one. You know? Um, so welcome for those of you all over the world. I know some of our Caribbean friends were messaging us <laughs> saying, I'm looking for the topic. Uh, when are you guys coming on? But um, remember, you are an hour ahead of us. And so here we are right on time. And so for men, for the men, you know, I want to have my wife plea your cause. <laughs> and I'm going to plea. Actually, we're doing it the opposite. The opposite. Around, you know? right? But first of all, sex is to men as romance is to women yes and um how can i'm going to be talking about helping you guys out and um playing the case for the women um by saying helping you guys realize how to unlock mm -hmm. how to unlock your wife's sexual energy and i know a lot of men like man can i unlock this woman because i know that's the question that my husband had most of our <laughs> our relationship is this woman does she have a key to open um you know when is this gonna happen you know so i guess the praying and fasting work but tonight we're gonna talk about i'm gonna be talking about um how uh how men how great romance could be uh, uh how you can demonstrate or to um, give, give romance in your wife in, sorry for have romance in your relationship and it's not being difficult things because most men believe when they hear the word romance there's two things that come to their mind uh time and money mm -hmm. and a lot of men are intimidated by ro the word romance mm -hmm. because to them it means you know what uh it's something that you know maybe it, it i'm not able it takes a lot of time a lot of money and i'm not that but mainly i believe that men fear rejection mm -hmm. and um because they feel like if they they do it wrong 
that they will feel a rejection from the wife first. And women, this is something that we can get better at. Whereas when our husband is doing his best to try to uh, give uh, bring this romance and he's getting very cre as creative as he possibly can, don't shoot them down, <laughs> you know, because sometimes, uh, and, and I did it because what happened was, you know, Joel would be creative and, uh, you know, like he would be, book a date or something for us to go somewhere and I'd be like, well, the children, I'll bring up things with the children. I'll bring up with things that I have to get done at the house. And here he is trying to surprise me by doing something romantic and nice. And I'm not seeing it. I'm thinking about the day's work and so on and so forth. Another thing is that men, when they, they might feel rejected in the way that um, you know, they might plan something out and they fear that it's not good enough or mm -hmm. it's not the right thing. So <laughs> tonight, we're going to help you out tonight, men, um, in, in that romance area. And um, we're going to... Have a good time. So Absolutely. Joey, and I, 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 I want to talk tonight to the to the to the ladies about the importance of sex because once again, sex is a need for a man. It's not like a want or an option. It's a need for a man, and sex is to a man as conversation and romance is to a woman. Yeah. As a matter of fact, a man becomes more conversational and emotionally connected after and during sex yeah. than he is prior. Now, there's a great need for a man to be, to, to be more, um, uh, uh, to prepare his woman and to be romantic leading into sex. Right. But in his buildup, there is a need for him to be uh, taken care of sexually and he becomes mm -hmm. more romantic, more emotionally connected during and after sex. And so there's a balance here that I guess Sherilyn and I want to bring to us for us to be in the mode of let's serve one another. I know we live in a culture where we feel like, you know, I'm going to take care of his need when he takes care of mine or I'm take care of her need when mm -hmm. I see her taking care of mine. But once again, we bring this even this topic back to the to the to the place where we say the best romance is where two servants are looking to meet the sexual need and romantic yes, need yes. of the other person without looking for the one per other person to, to make the first move. And right, so servants do this well. Right. Well, great sex and romance happens when we care. Simply yes. care. Yeah. You know, when we care about the needs of our husbands and we care about the needs of our wife, meeting their needs, not our specific needs, mm -hmm. as you mentioned. You know, so basically, there you go. Absolutely. And so, so you know, men, <laughs> you know, what happens to us is, you can we can become withdrawn sexually and emotionally and this is this happens to men all the time as a matter of fact it's almost like expected that the longer we're married that the more withdrawn emotionally we mm. should be to our wives as a matter of fact older men or men that are married longer often joke with the guys that are just about to get married that wait until you're married for a while because sex is going to be a thing of the past which should not be yeah. but unfortunately it is because we don't get ourselves educated in this area also um you know this when this area for a man is not taken care of he can become angry and resentful mm. towards his wife sometimes he knows why and sometimes he himself don't really know why because he's been stuck in this rut of um you know a relationship that's not sexually and romantically exciting and so he can become uh, angry and resentful over a period of time he don't really realize why and she is clueless also mm -hmm. and so we don't want to get to that place and also um men can become vulnerable to sexual temptations mm -hmm. out there because of the fact that this area of life is kind of like ignored mm -hmm. um, for him. Now, it is a man's responsibility because there's balance here. We're not going to teach you anything that's off balance. Mm -hmm. It is our responsibility of men to make sure that, as men, to make sure that we set sexual boundaries and we don't fall to temptation and that type of a thing. But it is also the responsibility of his helper to help him yeah. in this area yeah. that he is not vulnerable to sexual temptations right. because his needs are being ignored and uh, uh, looked at as unimportant. Right. And he's a man, so he needs to be strong enough to deal with the temptations, even though I'm not meeting his needs. Right. And so there's a balance and there's a level of responsibility that we both have to take 
to make sure that we're feeding each other in this area so that no one is being starved and left out there to so let's be transparent tonight basically i mentioned at the beginning of this um, broadcast that joel and i were not just talking at you we're talking it to you about things that we've experienced in our marriage being together for uh 20 something years mm -hmm. now and so we know it's a situation as we talk with people as we're out there in conversations as we're in ses sessions with different people these are issues that are ne neglected and one of the things when we got into marriage um, um, you know, sex was taboo. For me, mentally, based on tradition, culture, and church teachings from the church, sex was looked at as something that is um, is a duty. A woman does it as your duty. So when, when you think of something as a duty, that means you're having it once every three months, <laughs> you know? Um, and um, also, or it's something that, that is used just for reproduction, you know? You know, sex is just so when you want to have children, you know, or it's, um, you know, it's not something to be enjoyed. So the church, has been responsible a lot of the times uh, for bringing this stigma on, on sex when the Bible tells us it's a beautiful thing for a husband and a wife to get together. I know there were certain people back in the days in, in, in a certain religion, they were trying to take out the songs of Solomon out of the Bible because it spoke so explicitly on enjoying sexual mm -hmm. um, um, sexual in, intercourse and pleasures and romance in our marriages. And so this is something that we're not taught or told. And for women, sex is not a need for a woman but tonight we're going to talk about why it's you know it's not a need for a woman but why is it so much a, important of a need for a man and how we women can um get to the place where we can provide that need in such in a fantastic way and um what it is that we need and what our hus um our husbands need so Basically, I wanted to start off with romance. Absolutely. Take it away. Um, <laughs> I want to talk, we'll talk about romance because I think a romance actually unlocks mm -hmm. sex, um, sex in, the, in the marriage. I think both men and women, women uh, could, to, could um, benefit from that. In fact, there was a study that was done, um, a survey that was done by Dr. Phil. Um, Phil, yeah, Dr. Phil, mm -hmm. and he surveyed 37,000 uh, people and they were talking about the importance of romance. And when they were talking about romance, they all, they associated romance with, um, with, with, I'm sorry, so, so, associated romance, sorry, with sex and um, relationship. And they talk about your know, things like tenderness, kindness, uh, honesty, secure, um, sec security, mm -hmm. giving, um, and all these different things because romance is a process. You see, um, I would like to go to say that um, uh, romance Without romance, sex is just like seduction. It's just plain seduction. Absolutely. Absolutely. Without romance, sex can turn into a dull duty. But with romance, sex becomes connected connection to love. It leads to love. You know, with romance, sex becomes about giving and mm -hmm. not taking. And so tonight, I wanted to delve into um, romance. But, but first, I want to talk about the needs. There's a top five needs, uh, sex needs that women need um, in order to be able to get that full, that fulfilled experience when it comes to sex and again this is the these are the keys to unlocking your wife men um, mm -hmm. and women just ag agree with me if you agree with a lot of these Man. things that we're going through or what I'm gonna go through today Take um, notes, so buddy. so I'm <laughs> going on the fire right here right here just to to um, help us out here again and again of course my experience experience as well um, men have to understand that um, the nature of a woman and how she was made you see for men most men believe that um, sex equals love or when they hear the words romance they think about love um, so they, I mean they think about not love but they go straight to sex, sex like yeah. you know my husband is a wonder every time he just touch when when whenever he touch me or I thought no when I touch him he goes like, yes, all, all roads lead to sex. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, can I just touch you? I just want to touch you and caress you, you know. But um, again, romance is that um, gateway uh, there. So here are some five things that according to Dr. Gary uh, um, Roseberg and his wife did a study. And according to this study with men and women, here are the top five um, needs for women, sex need for women. Mm -hmm. um, the top sex needs for women are was a form, uh, affirmation. She wants to be appreciated during, 
before, during, and after sex. Mm. Not wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, and, and then go, good. Because sometimes I felt like I was just a, an object for Joel. I'm like, okay, you know, just use me and just, you know, gone. Anyway, and then number two was connection. A wife wants sex to be more than just physical, a physical act. She wants to connect with her husband, mm -hmm. mind, body, and soul. It's a, it's a complete experience for a woman. Yes. Number three um, is non-sexual touch. You see, when we say non-sexual touch, men don't understand. Like it wasn't registering to Joel the word non non-sexual <laughs> touch. Eh, all road <laughs> led to sex. So here, you know, for women, we 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 just want to to be held, to be hugged, to be be caressed, and no, and not have it be led to something like that. Because a lot of times we go through, uh, we might have a tough day, and our whole body is full of stress, and you know, just a touch from our husband a caressing ton tender touch from her husband a hug you know um it just says you know honey i care about you you know i care about your well-being and so even just come and sit down with me and, and cuddle in the chair and just talk and hold her hands and look at her hands and just talk for a moment especially in a busy setting and women allow your husband to do these things you know the everything else could wear um, um dirt will keep so you don't have to clean the house you know, you could definitely spend that time with your husband because his priority is number one. The children, guess what? They're distractions. <laughs> you know, I have three wonderful children and they're so important to me. Um, uh, that's why I gave, I gave up career to, to be home to raise them. But I'm, I'm telling you that the children, children could be a distraction if we're not monitoring this. Um, number four, women, women, um, sexual needs is, uh, I'm sorry, spiritual um, intimacy. Yes. And yes. Um, according to Dr. Big Ross, one. yeah, he, he talked about, he's talking about spiritual in, uh, intimacy. And according to the research, he says women, women said they wanted their husband to pray with them mm -hmm. and to be spiritual leaders of their home. They wanted connection spiritually. And this is a major one. Uh, I, I remember when there was a turn in our relationship mm -hmm. when Joel started taking the lead for um, for the spiritual growth in a home. Like where, you know, he would pray with me, pray for me. You know, um, when I talked about, about something that he didn't understand, I knew he probably did not understand what I was going through because even I was so overwhelmed emotionally that I didn't know what how to express myself. And it was overwhelming for both of us. So what he would do is just say, no, honey, I'm going to let the world just start coming off mm -hmm. of me. And I felt so relaxed. I felt even more trusting to my husband. And he wasn't no big prayer warrior. He just mm -hmm. simply prayed. Um, that he did not know, Father God, I need your help. We need your help. Um, we, I do not know what my wife is going through, but I know you love her and you care for her. She's your daughter. Help me help her. Just something simple like that. And also number five, the fifth most important need is romance. And um, romance shows a wife that her husband is thinking of her even when he doesn't have to. And this is so such a major one. And yeah. that, and um, I wanted to talk about romance because in this season right now, we're, we're going through it's Valentine. And at this time, a lot of times men lo look to be as romantic as possible. <laughs> and women are looking for how romantic their husbands could be. And men are looking for the prize at the end of the road, which is <laughs> great sex, you know. Um, so basically so we, we we just felt that we could come on here and talk about it but leading leading for a woman again she needs preparation um studies shows that when a woman is feels um affection outside of the the bedroom she's more sexually sexual all around you know, so when she feels a lot of affection, like my husband, and he started being more affectionate to me, like he would come up behind me when I'm washing dishes, and he would just hold me, come home. You know, before I used to um, put him off because he would come up, come with his dirty clothes from work. I'm like, I don't want the outside stuff, but he would just hold on to me and then melt me, and then I would feel the care, and then I would just melt, and um, that meant a lot to me. The more he was doing that and showing affection outside of the bedroom, I became sexual, more sexual 
all around. And another thing, when men are non-sexual non to their women, hugging, kissing, touching them outside of the bedroom, the woman becomes more sexual in the bedroom. So these are just, you know, things that we've experienced and many people have experienced that, that helped in when it came to... Um, to sex. So do you want to talk about the needs of men and then I'm going to go in more into Absolutely. romance and men. How how can you be more romantic towards your some tips? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, some of the needs for um for men is um I'm going to list them mutual satisfaction is one. Mm. Um number 2 is connection. Connection a lot of times it's a surprise actually when 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 this survey was done that connection was a top need. It was actually wow. the top three, one of the top three needs. And we have that in common. Both men and women have absolutely. that one as number two. Yeah. A connection with men, uh, a man and his wife is important to a man. Um, the other one is responsiveness, and I'm going to explain what responsiveness means. Mm -hmm. um, number three, actually, or number four, sorry, is initiation. Mm -hmm. It's now, <laughs> initiation is a big one. So a man needs to know that his wife is interested enough in him that she would actually once in a while initiate. Now, we understand that it's not always a woman's design to initiate sex all the time and every day. But every now and then, it is awesome to see when a woman or a wife initiates. And then finally, affirmation is another sex need of a man. Now... You know, I want to dive in. Can I dive yeah, into this a little right bit? Ahead. All right. Here's the deal about mutual satisfaction. A good and healthy sexual relationship is one where both husband and wife experience satisfaction during lovemaking. Mm -hmm. A man needs to know that he is actually taking care of his woman's needs sexually. So, you know, some women say that, well, you know what? I don't really need sex. I don't need it. Um, it's not a top need for me. And mm -hmm. so... What that does when a woman is not mutually satisfied or even show that she is interested or satisfied by what her man is doing for her, it can seem like rejection to him. Mm. Okay? Um, men are, are they're not fully pleased um, if they don't think that they are satisfying their women. Here's the deal. Men feel threatened mm. if they feel that their wife is dissatisfied. Wow. So they don't need to have a physical uh, 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 event where, you know, wife is flirting with another man and all of that stuff to feel threatened um, in their relationship. Mm. If, if a man senses that his wife is not mutually satisfied in their sexual relationship, he's already feeling threatened. Now, a lot of us men, we're, we're, we're emotionally modest, and so we're not going to come out most of the times and say to our wife, you know, honey, I feel threatened by the fact that, or, or, or offended by the fact that you're not um, showing that you, there's mutual satisfaction in our sexual relationship, you know, because most of us aren't built this way. And so what happens is we keep this inside of us, but in the back of our mind, it also begins to affect our self-image in our relationship right. so for men um, there's emotional and spiritual connection uh, that that's happening when uh, their sexual relationship and mutual satisfaction is happening here's here's a number over 50% of a man's self-image is tied wow. to his sexuality that's a big number you would say um, another big place that, that his self-image is tied to is his finances or, or his ability to provide. Mm -hmm. But over 50% is tied to his sexual relationship with his wife. And that's a big number. So if we as husbands and wife disregard this area mm -hmm. of our life as, as important or a wife says to herself, man, this guy is perverted or this is, this is not such a big deal. Um, why is he so caught up with this sex mm -hmm. area of life? Then guess what? You are looking at a 50% chance of him being more susceptible to sexual temptation because you don't feel that that area is important, right? And so tonight, like Sherilyn mentioned already up front, we're not knocking anybody because we're included in this. We're husband and wife. We also got to work Absolutely. constantly at this area of our lives. And so it's important for have to have this, uh, this kind of a conversation. Uh, a woman who says, I lay here 
and have you do your thing is crushing mm -hmm. the self-image of a man because he can't really uh, tell that there's any mutual satisfaction from a statement like that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, like Sherilyn mentioned, you know, because of responsibilities, because of um, some of the loads that women carry that we men may not even understand, it can put her in that position where sex becomes like a duty. duty yeah. and so Especially when romance is lacking. Absolutely. This is where romance is so important. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so this is why Sherilyn's part of this conversation is so important because it's necessary for her to have the energy to be able to, to get to a place where mutual satisfaction is something that can happen. Mm -hmm. um, husband that are relieving themselves, using their wife rolling over and then going to sleep, you're basically using your wife, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and to be honest with you, a guy in that state... <laughs> Guilty as charged here, in, you know, in my past. A guy in that state that does that, he has deeper emotional issues and, and internal burdens that he's carrying that's causing him to, 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 to operate like that. And so now I'm not knocking that guy either because there are things that we need to learn about ourselves and be aware of that's mm -hmm. going on on the inside of us that would cause us to operate like that. And so it's important. So that, number one, um, mutual satisfaction is huge. I want to jump ahead real quick and deal with initiation and come back to the rest of them. I remember you I talking about a part in mutual um, satisfaction um, where when a, a man feels rejected uh, or, yeah, he feels not only rejected, um, but he might be thinking that he is he's, he's also threatened mm -hmm. um, um i know instances where they have husbands that would um they would say start thinking about maybe she was satisfied by one of her previous partners mm -hmm. you know so basically i'm not comparing to this x y and z this mm -hmm. ex boyfriend this mm -hmm. ex husband or whatever so they start to conjure up that maybe she's thinking about that person or other people so those things are also you know that's where insecurity again mm -hmm. in the husband could come about you know why am i satisfied was she satisfied by someone else that um that, that I can't I can't compare to right now. Absolutely. And so some husbands they get uh, to a point where they start becoming accusatory to their wives. Mm -hmm. You know what is she doing? They become very insecure and untrusting too. Absolutely, that could be an issue. And so what happens a lot of times, Sherilyn, is um, relationships don't become as intimate as they need to be because true intimacy requires a lot of transparency, mm -hmm. a transparency about the past, and it takes a lot of maturity, mm -hmm. and especially from the man. It takes a lot of maturity as the man to be a strong leader, to be able to, to have your wife trust you for her to release information of the past and have discussions about her past. You have to be mature enough to be able to handle and store that information that you're about to get from her so that you could better what you guys have together. And if, if you're not at a place, or both of you are not at a place where you can maturely um, reveal or open up yourselves to one another, talking about the good, the bad, and the, the ugly, and the past, and all of that type of stuff, then the relationship never gets deep enough for you guys to begin to discuss the deeper things that are going to lead to a more satisfactory, intimate, and romantic relationship. And we have to trust that our partners are strong enough to receive uh, any kind of information that you possibly can get. Because I remember holding back things from Joe because I felt that, you know what, this might crush him or he might not take this well, you know, because I didn't think that he would be able to handle it. Mm -hmm. So, but I had to trust that he's strong enough to handle that. And the thing is, the response that I got when I did reveal these things to him, it was like unbelievable, totally different than what I mm -hmm. expected, which which kind of made my heart just melt again. And um, realizing that um, the enemy, again, once he have mm -hmm. us in darkness concerning each other, he, he grows in darkness and mm -hmm. he gets strong strength Strengthen. in the darkness and so we want it, it he's trying to put a a, a sev sever or put the wall between us and uh, when we don't communicate but anyway you can go on absolutely you know what i'm going to jump into connection because nothing makes men feel closer to their wives than being physically and emotionally connected to their wives here's a number 66 percent of men surveyed 
um, uh, said that connection is a top sexual need for them. Mm. Um, sex builds connection as talking and helping around the house does for, uh, for a woman. woman. Mm -hmm. So for a man, sex builds that level of connection um, that my wife cares about me. It's that important. We, we interpret care and all of these things from, from <clears throat> the act of her making herself available to us sexually as it does for when she see you know, us coming tired from work and we tell her take a break and we take the children, we give them a bath, we clean up the dishes. If we got all the children, we, we speak to them and make sure that they begin to pick up some slack around the home and relieve the stresses from our wives. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that's important to her well, guess what? Sex is that important to, to, to him. And so it's funny how we're built and it's so important. The Bible tells us that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. When we began to understand that these things are not weird or perverted, but this is just our design, mm -hmm. then we were able to become more intentional yeah. about how we meet it, or met each other's needs. I could not connect, you know, um, Sherilyn's uh, a, a sexual uh, uh, a needs to chores <laughs> and my helping around the house. I, I couldn't connect that, you know, as a man. I just couldn't put that together, but that was a reality, you know. Um, share, connection is huge because even in, um, in a, a setting where we don't expect it, when our wives are uh, being playful with us just in passing, that's that's that shows us that she's connected to us. And this is how important connection is. Let's say it's summertime. And this has happened between Sherilyn and I so many times. It's summertime. I'm outside putting some burgers on the grill and we got friends and our children's friends over. And Sherilyn just passed by and pinched me on the butt and looks me in the eyes. And when I look at her, she smiles at me like, ah, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Even little acts like that, that don't take a whole lot of energy. What it communicates to your man is that you have him on your mind in a fun and thoughtful way, in a spontaneous way. Just that little act of you brushing up on him and giving him that eye as you roll by with the potato salad, right? <laughs> right? It's so exciting. It's a small act but it drives so much energy into your romance and into your sexual life that it makes a huge difference. Let's say we had an event and everybody at that barbecue left and you know, we got the responsibility of cleaning up and all of that stuff. You know, a lot of times as a woman, you can get down to business thinking that, you know, I got so much to do. I got to clean up. I got to wash the dishes. I got to get the kids to bed. You know, y yes, we had fun and we had company over, but I got responsibilities. But when we sit back and have a little fun and be spontaneous with one another, that says a lot to a man that, you know what? I am important to my wife that she would spend this time to connect with me. Um, I remember a time, Sherilyn, and I want to share this because I was going through a, a rough time. We were going through a rough financial patch. Uh, I was stressed. I was working hard. And we were going through a rough season financially and responsibility-wise and so on and so forth. And I feel like at that time, I was in growth mode. I was a little afraid because I had taken on more responsibility as a family man and so on and so forth. So the world, uh, weight of the world was on my shoulder. And I remember it was a Friday afternoon. I left work. I was tired and frustrated. And I got out into the parking lot and I was about to get in my truck to come home. But Sherilyn had already sensed probably a week or two prior to this day that Joe, I was in a bad place. I was in a low. I was in a slump. And she already was so connected to where I was that she went ahead and planned a weekend trip. To Atlantic City. Now we live here in Central Jersey. Atlantic City is just down the road and it wasn't a big trip but it was very thoughtful of Sherilyn to plan that trip. She didn't tell me anything and she timed when I was going to get off from work, came to work, parked behind my truck so that I won't leave without, you know, ex escape. And when I got there, I'm like, who's blocking me? I'm already ticked off. I'm already mad at the world. And um, I couldn't get outside. Well, we were in a, I was in a rented car. So she was in a rented car. I couldn't see who, she wa who it was blocking me. So I came out. There was my wife. She says, hey, leave your truck here. 
jump in the car. We got a fun weekend planned. And I got to tell you this, that meant the world to me to see that my wife saw where I was, saw my stress level at that season and made plans for us to go to Atlantic City. Now, that, didn't, that trip didn't solve the problems I was going through at the time. And I didn't really need the problem solved. What I needed is what she did for me most was to let me know that she was connected to me and she felt what I was feeling and going through in that season. Mm -hmm. And that weekend changed our relationship drastically. I remember still being at a place in our life where, you know, I kind of viewed her. I didn't view her as fully on my side. You know, uh, the devil had me looking at her sometimes as my enemy and not my partner. But that weekend changed everything. When I realized that she was connected to where I was and what I was going through and she was feeling my pain and she set this up for me. Um, it changed our relationship. That was a pivotal moment in our life. And of course, that helps uh, romance and our sexual connection to be um, what it needs to be. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, well, guys, if this information is helping you, we encourage you just just give us a thumbs up, a like, mm -hmm. um, share it to someone that might can, can benefit from this. Because I believe that we go through experiences in life, not just uh, so that we can go through and, ex and, and, and overcome, but so we can help someone that's mm -hmm. been going through it. Because if I heard this information a while back, it would have helped me again, um, help both of us in our relationship um, not go through a, so long of a pain process and we would have been creative or sooner to be able to do things so if it's helping you in any way just like it share it with someone give us a thumbs up or a one hey thank you alana how are you here's what i want to yeah. here's what i want to say openness and emotional trust keeps people intimately united openness and emotional trust keeps relationships intimately united and i think this is what men uh, we're designed to feel this way, but a lot of times we're not educated on it. So we don't know that this is a consciously know that this is important to us, but it is in our spirit. We're looking for it. Here's what the University of Washington research said. It said that um, in their study, it proves that emotional connectivity was the missing link in marriages that ended in wow. divorce. Wow. So we are experiencing this also because we're counseling a lot of people and people are making the decision to end the divorce process. But the reason why they've made the decision for the most part when we look at it to end the divorce process was not because there wasn't an offense, because there was great offense in, in a lot I mean, of the, the relationship. End of marriage. The, 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 yeah, the marriage, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Um, there was great offenses in the relationship, right? Here, some of it is infidelity, some of it was physical abuse, and they decided to stop the divorce process. Why? Because during the counseling process, okay, their okay. husband became emotionally connected. Something broke in him mm. to make them trust him now because mm. they felt more emotionally connected. connected. Okay. Right? This didn't remove the offense. He cheated. This didn't remove the offense. He had laid hands on her. But what changed was there was a connection of the heart that they never saw before, an emotional connection that was being developed that made the wife reconsider and give him another chance at working at the relationship. So emotional mm. connection is usually the key to a relationship surviving difficult times. And this is something mm. that is important for a man in his sexual need. Um, and, and here's the last thing about connection. Sexual release helps a man to become more emotionally open mm -hmm. to his woman. So things that you could not have gotten out of him or gotten... <laughs> you hear that, lady? <laughs> <laughs> things, things that you could not have gotten him to open up about, he is more willing to open up about it when he feels like he is connected to you. And sex is the greatest way for a man to feel like there's sexual uh, connectivity. Well, All I'm right? going to I'm going to take over from here Absolutely. and talk a little bit more, more about what romance look like for women. You yes. know, romance is caring in action. Mm -hmm. Why is caring so important and what is caring? I'll take a page out of the Bible for this one. You know, in Ephesians 5:25 it says husbands love your wife. Speak the highest good 
for her and surround her with caring, unselfish love. Mm. Just as Christ also involved the church and gave himself up for her. You know, women men want to know women want to know that their hus their husbands will will love and care for them sacrificially to his own hurt. He is willing to do this for me. And this is one of the things that would really mean meant a lot to me because I knew a lot of things were, were not easy for Joel. He didn't know a lot of things, um, relationship, relational wise, but he learned. He took the time out, you know, sacrificially. He loved and take care of us to his own own hurt. And that night, he was talking about the the time he was going through all that stuff. I saw Hardy he was out there working for our family. I saw what I knew what he was going through. A lot of times, he kept it to himself. But when I was praying for him and I was spending time alone, Lord, the Lord downloaded a lot of things of of experience. And this was actually a, a place plan given to me by Holy Spirit to do this. Mm -hmm. Because remember, we were going through financial challenges and how can I get the money to, to, mm -hmm. to get to do this? So God worked out in that area. But women want to know that their husbands love them so much and shows care to sacri by sacrificially to their own herd, doing things for them, spending the time to even get to know their 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 wife. What is this, what her likes, what's her, her dislikes and paying attention to details. When she talks, I know we could talk a lot <laughs> and we might go on and on and on, but him finding different things and all the talking that she's saying downloads a little bit about what she's talking about and um, and just try to work on those things to provide for her. First, for wives, um, you know, um, for wives, it's a huge thing when a, when a man came here. So caring is this deciding every day to place a high value on your spouse making sure um you will you fill their need before and without them having to tell you Amen. you know because you are constantly sacrificially studying them you know um in there i was talking about um caring is deciding every day to place a high value on your on your spouse now what the value that we place on our spouse matters so much because value is a, is important because based on the value you place on your spouse you will you will care for them mm -hmm. for example is the difference between a rolex how you take care of a rolex and a timex is the difference with how you care for your cz earring and a real diamond earring you know the value you place on on that person is how you're going to take that time out to care for them like when a young man buys his first car he spends so much money and sacrifice to get this car that he, he buffing that thing and cleaning it down every day <laughs> You know, I'm mad at the bird that is doing his natural thing. If the bird does anything to his car, it's value is valuable to him. And so, to whatever he needs to do, he's gonna do everything to take care of it. You know, um, here are some tips on romance. Um, um, uh, on romance, romance must be tailored to your wife. It cannot be generalized because usually sometimes men will say, okay, yeah, well, yeah, let me go buy her some roses. Um, you know what? Let me go buy. My husband know not to bring, don't, but not to buy me. Not that like I don't like flowers, but him buying flowers and chocolate for me is not my thing. I'm not a chocolate and flower kind of guy, um, girl. I mean, you could bring me home a, a, a box, um, a can of nuts. You could tell them what some of the things are. Yeah, some you of know? The, some mixed nuts. <laughs> mixed nuts, you know, um, and <laughs> you know some um, some of our favorite uh, food. Yes. Um, you know um, some of our some of our favorite drinks that I got to order online Why? for her. <laughs> yeah, just um, the sponsors. Those are the things that I like. So you have to know your wife's needs specific to her. A great book also is to know your um is the five love languages because when you know your wife's love language, that's an off an, another awesome way to show that you care because you're going to be talking speaking to her in her love language versus yours joel's love language is positive affirmation he loves to be affirmed it's not mine and so before he used to always affirm me and i'm like why is this boy trying to big my head up you know i don't need all of that but it's just he was speaking in his own love language but my love language acts of service and i would be doing everything for him and he's like what Shirley, you don't need to do that you're doing too much but i was speaking in my love language when he 
realized that that was my love language. So things like, you know, him um, washing the dishes or, you know, taking the garbage out or again, help, uh, help asking the children to help me out when he's overwhelmed a little bit, it took the ease off of me and it showed that he cared for me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some uh, women like candlelights and dinner and a movie. Some don't. Some just want to go out to a nice restaurant. Some women like something extravagant and some let women, because of they understand your financial situation based on their money language, you don't want to splurge. Um, they might just want something simple. So you have to know your wife and mm -hmm. then you do that. Life has a way of wearing a woman down. And so when you first, the woman that you first met, remember that she probably didn't have as much responsibility taking care of you and the children, a brand new home and all these different things. She might be promoted or working in a job that she's been going to college for and it's a lot of responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And so life has a way of coming in and trying to draw and draw from her. So she's not the same energy, vibrant, sexual creature that you fell in love with. And so this needs to be fostered. And how is that um, uh, able to be fostered is through romance. You know, women need to know that one of the reason men find romance intimidating against, like I talk, talk about, is fear of rejection. You know, um, you know, they say they say we have other engagements. Let's say we have other engagements, you know, like with the children and so on. Sometimes women, we could tend to, you know, tell our, our husbands, oh, well, we have this, we have that, and put things in front. Or it might be really good things. I'm not, don't get me wrong, you know, um, you know, our children are involved in a lot of activities, but I made sure, made sure that Joel is my priority, that if there's anything that he's needed, I'm putting all of their schedules around that. There are some things that are scheduled and but I, that uh, we have to make, but I still also prioritize in case Joel needs uh, something as well. These are some romance busters for both men and women uh, to be aware of. These are fatigue and tiredness. Men, men, women, we are creatures. We are incubators. So outside things, um, really get, uh, when, whenever a woman experiences something, she internalizes it and it multiplies. Just like men, this is how God created us. Because when we receive a seed from a man, we, in nine months, we get a full-blown baby. You give a woman an uh, idea or thought, she has a full-blown idea. You give her a house, she makes it into a home. You give her uh, meat, she makes it into a beautiful dinner. She never gives you back what you give her. So in this, in, the, in, in knowing this, because women are more outside doing so much more, she's constantly in taking negative frustration, all the stress, 2020, you know, I could just say 2020, you guys know what that is. But all these overwhelming things, women are amplifying it in them and it really bogs them down. So there could be fatigue, there can be very um, stress tiredness on um you know could affect the romance in life or well, other things that could affect our romance are distraction things distractions like your work church and um unsolved issues mm -hmm. Conflicts, um, disappointments, could, um, you know, because a lot of times when Joel would promise that he would fix something or do something and, he, and it's like uh, five months later and it's still not done, you understand, you give him grace all the time, like, no, honey, you, you know, he's busy and so on and so forth. But what could be a sacrificial thing is that he would sacrifice one of these weekends in the five months to at least put up the uh, screw in the light bulb. But, you know, so things like that, you know, um, Disappointments and indifference um, are, are, th are, are busters to things that bust your um, romance. And um, unwilling hearts and some chores that are left undone. So according to a survey done by Gary and Barb Rosenborg, romance can be had by all with little time and little money. And here are some um, things um, men you can do. I wrote down a few things here. Number one, learn your wife, um, your wife love needs. What makes her feel cherished and loved? You know, and again, when you're spending time and you're really getting to know your wife, it's a wonderful thing. Remember, you chose her. You married her for a reason. You know, and hopefully it's more than just <laughs> fulfilling your sexual needs. You know, um, and so get to know your wife, cherish her, and get to know her love needs. Number two, be tender, hold her hands. You know, carry carry it in your you carry your hands when um are you are 
our hands when you walk. You see, my husband holds mine when we walk. I'm not kind of a holdy hand person. However, he knows I like to laugh. So when he would hold my hand is when we we're going into stores. So when we go into stores, like for example, he would say the name of the store and, he, and that's love. So when we go into Walmart, he would hold my hand and say, yeah, here's big time Walmart love <laughs> coming in. You know, here is ShopRite love coming in. So he know I like to laugh so that he knows me. And so he's being tender and, um, and, and caring for me. So number one is knowing knowing what you want your the needs of your wife what she loves number two is being tender to her you know caressing her hair that type of thing you know touching her randomly rubbing her back and so on number three show her you care you know pay attention to the things that she likes so if your wife likes to dress up and go out when she go out and you're not that type because usually opposite attracts yep. well guess what you know bathe your skin put on some nice clothes and cologne and dress up and go out with her. Even if you guys are going, you know, if you go into the store, you're going to take the children to a game or stuff like mm -hmm. that, look different, you know. Um, you know, I had to, to to help out my um, my country boy a lot. Yeah. <laughs> well, I love my country boy. I used to have a lot of, lot of laughs and see him like, what is boy going with these 13 different colors? But anyway, <laughs> um, it was just exciting to see him just starting to, to, to take, uh, pride in his, his appearance and even wanting a nice shirt and pants because again we didn't have much so he didn't the last thing he would think about is buying clothes for himself but then he started to prioritize and buy a little little bit here and there um, number four remember days that are very important to your wife you know not days that the world says is important to her remember what is important to her and uh, put it on your calendar and do something special for her you know be very creative make it matter some women they like um, remember the first day that we met remember our first date and that type of thing it's things that she's talking about always you ask her even asking her straight up question you know um, you know what are some of the days that are important to you and put them on your calendar because it shows her that you care all of this is building romance. Number five, surprise her. Get her her favorite snack, drink, food, flower. Write notes to her. Just surprise her in any kind of way, um, shape, or for, form. Or you can surprise her, but when she's coming home, the light bulb is taken care of. <laughs> you know, um, number, number six. Make a big splash. You know, once in a blue moon, blue moon, it's very nice to do something spontaneous for your wife. You know, do something that is over the top. And, you know, you guys know, um, not you, business as usual. You know, if you're going out, um, you have Valentine like tonight. If you always get her the same box of chocolate from ShopRite and the same wine and so on, do something different. different. Make it yeah, different. Even if you have to plan for this for the whole entire year, you're putting away, putting away 50 cents to be able to take her to something. You know, whatever the case, just make a big splash. Number seven. You know, share secrets, have special, um, a special something mm -hmm. with Joel and myself. We have this thing that we do since we were, um, young, uh, in, in high school and, uh, we would whisper to each other, um, elephant shoes. And when you say elephant shoes, our mouth looks like it's saying, I love you. <laughs> so we would just say elephant shoes quiet to each other and we're laughing because we know we're saying elephant shoes, but we really mean I love you. So have something special for both of you um, that will make your wife, and especially in the tough times, you know, so when I'm doing something and I'm overwhelmed and stressed, like when we were building our business and he look around the corner and he see me overwhelmed and he goes elephant shoes, I'm laughing I'm like this boy is something else. So something secret between the two of you number eight um you know get a we have a getaway plan mm -hmm. every now and then you know joel and i we like to randomly get away you know it don't have to be major but it could be this it depend on your finances depend on where you are in life right now some people could be saving for a business a, um, a home and so mm -hmm. on but you still don't want to neglect your relationship god will always provide a way an opportunity for you to accomplish these things so basically it could be you know you go out to dinner or you just take a night out to a hotel in a nice place not too far or in a nice in a nice place and you take her out to dinner and then you go home the next day. But just something that is um, 
is a getaway plan a get weekend getaway a night getaway just mm -hmm. get away because it's nice to just get away from the children the home the the norm the things the people that you see every day and just go into a strange place and with joel like we like to go different places and people watch you know something <laughs> just totally different you know and then shake things up instead of just the just dinner and a movie do something you you heard her talk about like for me um it, it's like walks at the reservoir just going to the reservoir and then our my idea of a picnic is not a picnic i'm not i don't really like a picnic but what he would do is probably take me to a diner or, or a place for breakfast so we probably go over there to the diner on nine or they, we used to have the jackson diners no more there or we go to the jackson diner or we go over to um to our friends, ihop or our friends or her friends, uh, friends um shop the bagel bistro in jackson Eric, you rock. Anyway, <laughs> you know, and just something spontaneously, just so spontaneous like that. Um, you know, shaking things up. And we have a number 10 is if you think it, do it. Because chances are God is, is God is helping you. God, our relationship matters to God in such a magnificent way. You see, when I found out that we, when we were broken and we didn't know what to do and we just surrendered to God because we literally did not know what to do and we just surrendered to God. We didn't surrender to humans or anything in the world. He just would be speaking to us. And a lot of times God, God is speaking to you as well. And so if you think you do it, for example, leave a note. If you thought about something during the day while you're working about your wife, send her send her a text. You know, my husband likes to send me spontaneous texts, um, nice things, or he would take a picture of something that's funny and send it to me. Like, you know, any little thing, it makes me laugh because, you know, I like to laugh. So anything to make me laugh or something is funny, he would send it to me because, you know, I love to laugh. And sometimes spontaneously in the middle of the day when I'm overwhelmed, I get to laugh. And it takes off something, but and again, it it has to do with knowing your little bit, but uh, knowing knowing your wife. So if you think it, do it. Be spontaneous. You know, um, leave those notes. Send those random flowers to her job or at home. Things that she like. Do them random. So if you think it in your head, just do it. Amen. Amen. Well, you know that's that is so um, encouraging and exciting because these things are the things that are they're 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 breaking down and tearing down walls that we may have come into our relationship with from other relationships or when we were children we had some preconceived notions yes. of what our relationships look like and what our romance and sex life should look like based on what we saw from our parents but these things as you learn them and you implement them they begin to tear down those old thought yes. processes yes. that kept you boxed yes. in that made uh, the younger people that were dating look like they had a more exciting romantic life than you as a married person and that shouldn't be yeah. because you got all of the legal rights to be able to enjoy uh, and have a good time and have fun mm -hmm. in the context of your marriage let's talk about initiation a little yeah, bit this one this one is a huge one yeah. this was this is one of my biggest challenges yeah let's talk about initiation a little bit because for men it's important when they can see that their wife has interest in initiating sex. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not something that uh, a man should expect that would happen every single day um, and regularly, but every now and then it's cool to know that you're surprised by the initiation of your wife instead of you having to be the one that pursue her all the time. So some of the greatest opportunities for initiation is when a wife notices the stress level of her husband is high mm -hmm. right um i think that that's sometimes the best opportunity to be able to initiate because when a man's stress level is high from the responsibilities of life or work or a problem that he's dealing with um, his creativity level begins to drop i don't care how awesome he is and and you are awesome but I don't care how awesome you are, when life begins to beat you down and you're emotionally and physically tired, you will lose a certain level of your creativity. Yeah. And when a woman notices this, because she's connected and we spoke about this before, and she begins to do the initiation, then what that does is it rejuvenates him. Mm -hmm. um, it is a confidence booster and an energy builder when a man notices that his wife is initiating sex. Mm -hmm. Remember that sex is 50% of his self-image. Yeah. 
So when it, when it's being initiated by his wife, what she's doing is she's raising his his value. Yes. She's raising his self worth. You know, um, did you know? Research shows that over a period of time, especially when a man becomes older, the more and more he feels rejected sexually, erectile dysfunction is connected to that wow. emotional erectile dysfunction. This doesn't mean that he has a f a physical or medical ailment because some men are struggling at an older age because of their health, right? Sexually. But there is psychologists mm. do, have done research that shows that ED is caused by constant what he interprets. It may not be a rejection, but whatever he interprets as rejection can put him in a place where his sex life is compromised and he is now uh, hiding out. Um, he may not, if, if, especially if he is not uh, open and uh, emotionally connected to you yet at the level where he should be, he may begin to run because now he's embarrassed by the fact that he's no longer operating at the level wow. that he used wow. to. That's he may perfect. begin to run and hide and make excuses. Oh, I'm tired because there are guys that say I'm tired now. Mm -hmm. There are guys that, that say I'm not in the mood or there are guys that whatever the case may be, they are now hiding from not just <laughs> the fact that they are dealing with ED, but now they're dealing with the spirit of, of, of shame and right. embarrassment yeah. because they don't even understand what's happening to them right. and so this be this happens because of them interpreting it as rejection so women helpers this is where we come in women we need to we need to know this so we can help our husbands you know we're the ones the difference maker and we're the ones that they are their our voice means so much in our husband's ears so instead of tearing them down and knowing this information and withholding it for any kind of reason we're supposed to be givers because when we give we will receive the benefits absolutely absolutely um so fulfill his fantasy to be desired and pursued by you sometimes mm -hmm. um it's important f to, to be able to do that and i say sometimes because i know that it's not realistic in life that this is the mode a woman would be able to be in all the time once again you got children other responsibilities you're working a lot of you run your own businesses um outside of your responsibility in the home but to help meet his needs, fulfill some of his fantasies to be desired and pursued by you. Mm -hmm. How to meet his needs for sex? Well, remember your husband is a sexual being, mm -hmm. right? You got to remember that this is how he's built and this is a need. This is his design. This mm -hmm. is his God design, design yeah. right? So he's not trying to be a sexual being. He is a sexual being. So remember that he is. View yourself as a sexual being yeah. to be able to do this better here are little, some some little tips to be able to do this better keep sex vibrant in your marriage right keep sex Make vibrant sex in your great marriage. again yeah <laughs> sorry that was <laughs> <laughs> yeah make sex great again right budget for it budget for it it's it's simple and it's 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 groundbreaking but we budget for everything and then and then when it comes to sex we don't budget but, for yeah, it you know why yeah. because we have not raised it at, and put it at the priority level as your light bill as your car payment as your mortgage right this is one of the life bloods of your relationship staying together remember the 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 the, the emotional and 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 um physical well-being of mm. your marriage is what's sustaining everything wow yeah right it's what's sustaining your ability to be there for your children it's what's giving you both energy to go back to work the next day and provide for your family it is what is creating the, the 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 glue between the two of you mm -hmm. so that you can be um the pillars that you are in your community whatever it is that your function is in your community your ability to energize each other sexually is holding mm -hmm. your entire family unit together so if you don't budget for it you're saying that I'm, I'm willing to let this area die, which means that a part of our relationship is going to die, which means that the relationship has the potential to die, mm. right? If you don't feed it, it won't grow. Mm. Save energy for sex. Mm -hmm. 
save energy for it. So a lot of us, we go, go, go until we're burnt out. But wisdom says save energy for it. So if there's some chores that you, gotta, that you have to leave on the back burner and go take a nap because he's on his way home in about three hours and you haven't rested yet, mm -hmm. it says wisdom it, to say, hmm, let me leave some of these things undone for another day so that I can save energy or gain some energy for this when he does get here later. So being able to budget money for it, budget time and budget energy for it is important. Um, put sex on your mind. Women don't really are not sexual creatures. Men are thinking about sex every 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. No kidding. That's what research says, right? Married men, grown men think about sex regularly throughout the day. So and prime to go when women need help and they need an environment created. They need romance and all of this to keep them going. That's why so, romance should be a consistent thing. So when you're ready to go, then, you know. Ab absolutely. You know, but as you a... You got to deposit before you withdraw. <laughs> as a helper, you know, studies show that you as a woman also need to put sex on your mind. Because whatever you, 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 you think of, whatever you uh, invest in, it grows. Yeah. Make sense? So as you put it on your mind, it's becoming something that is easier to execute when the time comes around. There are going to be days when um, he's not going to be at, on his A game because life has beaten him down. And those are the days when you initiate, right? Because the Bible tells us that the strong has to bear the infirmity of the weak. So it's a give and take situation. There are some days when he is the strong and he needs to assume the responsibility of being the strong so that he can create the environment for romance. But there are going to be days when life has beaten him down and you could see that he wants to come home, take his armor off and really not have to carry that load. And those are the days when it's great for you to be able to initiate and make it happen so that he can be rejuvenated to go again. Mm -hmm. um, pray about the growth of your sex life. Yeah. Right? A lot of times we feel like sex is off limits to our prayer life. It is not. Nope. Pray it's... about your sex life. Yeah, sex matters to God. God created it. Mm -hmm. He invented it. So this is the, who better to go to than the manufacturer, the, the producer, the creator of mm -hmm. sex. Mm -hmm. Going to and and we're a testimony because this I I needed help in this area in terms of initiating mm -hmm. because God had to download to me the importance and how valuable and you know the significance of sex for my husband and because He says if you care then you care about the things of your husband mm -hmm. and this matters to him like it says study shows every twenty minutes. My husband is thinking about sex. Mm -hmm. And the society knows this and they, they, they advertise to that in men. Mm -hmm. And so here we are as our uh, women, the, the, that's really the gatekeepers of our husband's heart mm -hmm. is sex life. And we are not doing our job. We are distracted. And guess what? This is so important, you know, because the things that we're looking, I really realized when I made, met this need of Joel, Joel became all the things that I wanted him to be, the, the leader. I mean, and I wasn't doing it in Intentionally, I was doing it because this is what God was downloading to me and I naturally started doing these things and then he started becoming the, the leader the spiritual leader of the home um, he started fixing the light bulb <laughs> <laughs> he started I, 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 doing different things in honestly, the Honestly, I can get better at fixing things around the house. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a growing right. process. But, so, so pray. But yeah, yeah, prayer is so powerful. Pray for the God, growth. It matters to God so much. Pray for the growth in your sex life, right? Here's another tip. Dress sexy for his eyes only. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. There are some things that you need to do for his eyes only. And a lot of times what happens is we like this one. we give our best or you give your best to the job, right? So you dress up, you groom up, and you look great in the morning on the way out. And then when you come home on the way in, and I'm not knocking you because this is not intentional, but on the way in, what we do is we tone it down and we, we, we get into relax mode and we're not putting the emphasis on the fact that just as I looked hot to go do what I needed to do for my boss, I can 
invest some of that time to look even harder for the man of yeah. my yeah. of my heart, right? Yeah. So dress sexy for his eyes only. Um, at least once a month, plan a sexual surprise to arouse him. Have fun and let him uh, and see. Let him see your body. Let him see you. You know, a lot of times what happens is, you know, we don't get to see your body because you buy that flannel nightgown. Oh my God. <laughs> the thing that we need to take a torch to. <laughs> that's not sexy. Women. Right? That's not sexy. And, and again, guys, I am talking from a... I'm the sweatpants girl. I just... The chick that gets in the sweatpants and the hoodie and I'm going to... Um, I'm the one that the lumberjack outside cutting trees down, cleaning up, doing all that stuff. And I come in and I just throw, throw you know, throw down. Take off everything else and, in, uh, and just... Be relaxing in the house and you know uh, my appearance I didn't know my husband always tell me you're so beautiful and I would just reject it okay mm -hmm. he's trying to build my head up but he was telling me because it mattered to him mm -hmm. and then because I care about him again download some Holy Spirit because if you truly care about your husband listen to what he's saying just like Absolutely. how you want him to listen to what you're saying and meet your needs then you need to listen to him and meet his needs and I'm like I could do that I could do that for him absolutely <laughs> so so uh, have fun letting him see you just the way you are just and your way, husband don't just care way. about your size they don't care about no. what you look like no. nothing you are who matters to him he loves you just the way you are absolutely you know? absolutely so um let him see it and enjoy his reaction or response to those times when you surprise him like that you have to now begin to enjoy the process See, this thing is not about having a destination mindset, but it's about the process of you enjoying that. Um, what's your special perfume? What's your special smell when you guys are doing this? That is another thing that we can invest in, mm -hmm. right? Pay attention to your body's uh, responses to, uh, to, to him. So pay attention to your body's sexual responses so that you guys can be more intentional about how you enjoy one another. That's something that's also important because a lot of times um, men ask women, so what is it that you like? And then she's like, well, I don't really know. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Honestly, she never knew because it wasn't important to her. She didn't, mm -hmm. she didn't pay attention to that detail. So she's not even able to, to help him, to help her to get to the ne next level in their sex life right so you're saying and we so, can play a part in it <laughs> absolutely we both play a part in being better for one another and this is where this is where transparency and connection helps us so much because when we don't shame each other when we have these conversations is where we're able to educate each other about one another's Amen. needs and likes Amen. and fantasies yeah. so that we can up our game with one another all the time mm -hmm. there are areas that we don't compromise and we always up our games in those areas we go back to school our jobs call for us to get refresher courses if we're in technology we got to be up with the newest technology that comes out so that we could be on the cutting edge of our career we got to be on the cutting edge of a curriculum if we're teaching mm -hmm. you know when new information come out we got to go get refresher courses mm -hmm. on everything that we do professionally mm -hmm. we got to do that but in our relationship this is the last place we look to be on the cutting edge wow. And wow, this good. is the thing that sustains everything about mm -hmm. our life. When our relationship at home falls apart, we are not able to have the emotional and physical and spiritual energy to go out there and provide and to be there for our children. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Our marriages are the foundation that holds together our entire nation. Mm -hmm. Because nations are made up of individuals who have families, who those families uh, build a community and communities put together builds up nations. And so when we're seeing the decay in our nations, we're looking at the fact that in our households, we have not prioritized or made it important yes, what should sir. be most important. Yes, and that is this topic tonight. Yes, romance and, and sex, sex yeah. right? Become more adventurous women become more adventurous um begin to 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 practice doing that to remove some of and dispel some of the fears 
and then of course ask your husband for advice he would love to give you advice in this area a last sex need for a man is affirmation if a man's wife affirms him right the husband becomes more of what God created him to be she is the helper and so she needs to affirm him in every way possible because what that does is build more value in him mm -hmm. right a wife is the one person who gets close enough to a husband or to a man that she can build him up wow. or she can completely destroy him and we have seen both ends of the spectrum you are the only one that gets into the proximity of that man that is able to raise his value and build him up so God can yeah. get the glory out of his life uh, yeah. or you can destroy him and you say well Joel how does sex and romance either build a man or destroy absolutely does right you know we're a living testimony of this listen we are not trying to talk about anything that we uh, we don't want to practice in our own life you know what we're going away next weekend right because we know you can sense when your energy level is low when you are giving out more and you are, are producing more than you have put into you guys and there are times when you gotta stop and take a break I don't even care if it's a 48 hour break it is so necessary to be able to feed yourself most of the people that call us today and complain about how far in the basement their relationship has gone have not budgeted recently or never budgeted for their sex and romance mm -hmm. life they have never budgeted time and they aren't prioritizing the time to, to for their sex and romance life they're caught up with life and the cares of life that they won't even take a 48 hour period to invest in their romance and their sex life mm -hmm. right so it's really really important for us to do that yeah. how to meet a husband needs for affirmation affirm him for who he is like just for who he is you know sometimes guys can look at themselves over a while especially when they're aging and they can begin to lose mm. uh, self-esteem because their belly starting to get a little big right or they're mm -hmm. losing muscle mass and they starting to look a little funny when they look at themselves in the mirror affirming your spouse for who they are a man appreciates that that wow she loves me just the way I am not because I used to look like Danza Washington but just because I'm who I am right <laughs> Affirm him for being a good lover. Remember, 50% of his self-esteem or self-image is built on this area. Affirm him for being a good provider, right? The other 50% of him is built on that. But affirming him is part of him being in the place where he's able to fulfill your need for mm -hmm. romance, gives him the energy um, to, to, to not be distracted by the fact that the devil is already telling him mm -hmm. that he's no longer this or mm -hmm. he can't do that, mm -hmm. right? Practice the golden rule with him, right? Mm -hmm. Treat him based on how you want to be treated because he is also a human being. And you might say, man, he's a man and I'm a woman and I'm the softer sex. But men are more emotionally vulnerable than women. Men are actually more sensitive especially in the area like sex and romance they're even more sensitive and the slightest thing that you tell them messes with their their mind and their emotion and mm. lastly understand that his body image matters to him mm. his body image matters to him so if you joke about how you know he's this or that what I'm happens <laughs> what happens is as funny as those jokes would be when he's in his quiet moments he's looking at himself like oh yeah i wonder if this is who i really am and it begins to hit at his self-image once again i'm not going to call the word but that ed word that market for that for the for those products that they have created for ed is huge because we have been irresponsible with the way that we have treated our men and this has allowed them to be compromised that the drug companies are making <laughs> billions of dollars selling them a pill when their self-esteem is what is really hit mm -hmm. when their self-worth is really down because they've been uh, uh, verbally and emotionally uh, beat down mm -hmm. and so we don't really need drugs 
Um, sometimes we do, but we don't need it as much as we need to be built up and to be cared for with affirmation. Amen. By our wives. Amen. Yes. Amen. So we hope well, that this message is helpful. Sherilyn, you want to wrap us up? Yes. Well, the greatest example of romance is um, taken from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because he sacrificially loved us. And, and if you if an avid reader of the word, you'll see that he's thoughtful. He thought he thinks about us all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, he knows us and cares for us according to our needs. He knows how we designed us and so he's always meeting our specific needs um, he is patient with us and shows us grace when we fail to glorify or obey him so in this instance you know our husbands and wives will, might fall, fall short they might be falling short now but and they might be working on this you decide that we're going to work on our sex and our romance life and your 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 wife or or, or husband might not be consistent as yet well we have to show them grace absolutely you know because we will want that same grace and be patient for the process um jesus christ is quick to forgive and never keeps record of our wrongdoings and we want to make sure that we are the same way like you know i i, I don't remind joel of the things that he has not done in the past and bring it up in conversations or have it meditating in my mind that it would rob me of focusing on how i can be created for him presently or even get a download from holy spirit to be able to help him and help our marriage and our family go forward you know Jesus when we see all when we see all the mercy and grace and love that God shows us and delivers us from our, our own destruction time and time again then we turn around and can give him what he wants which is all of us the praise and glory and so the same thing with us when we see all the mercy and grace that our spouse would show us in this growth process here like when you 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 Joel mentioned you know with men affirmation you know affirming him um being there for him in 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 such incredible ways you know making sure that we're doing those things and and consistently doing all the things that we need things that you've learned tonight when you start when the you start doing these things husbands you know give your wife a little grace show some mercy when they fall short and vice versa men give your women um your your wives give your husband grace and Husbands, give your show your wife grace and mercy. Don't be keeping a tab and being legalistic, but being patient in the process. And in the end, you will get the desires of your heart. You will yes. get what it is that you're looking for. That affirmation, you know, that initiation, that connection, you know, all the things, you know, that that's great sex. And women, you'll get the romance. You'll get the the leader of your household, intimately, um, intimacy leader of your household. You'll get that uh, connection conversation you know you'll get all those things necessary for you to be able to have a great relationship and um you know, we want to make sure that we're constantly remembering that, you know, God is the best example for loving and caring. And when we don't know what to do, we go straight to the word of God. You know, we can Google things on love and care and meditate on those things and let it be a part of us yeah, and we'll be able to, to be better. And go to Songs of Solomon if you want to see some spicy romance <laughs> um, affirmation words about how you can improve your romance and sex life. There's a lot of passion in there. And um, a lot of us believers skip over that book. And that's a book that we don't really hear much about in church. But it's a huge part of our um, of the, of our word and and the Bible that we yeah. believe in. Yeah. So if you don't, if you want, you you have to. If you believe the Bible, you have to believe all, all of, of it, it. You know. And um, I want to thank you guys for joining us tonight, Delroy Fredericks. Thank you. God blessings to you and your family, Alana and um, and uh, Alana. Well, um, thank you for joining us. Rosa oh Roxanne. Roxanne, how are you? Thank you for joining us tonight, guys. We bless you. We thank you. Sharon, thank you for joining us tonight. You know, if the information is very helpful tonight, we'd encourage you to share it. Uh, with, with anyone that you know, you can message them in a private message. You don't have to be on the, on their um on their Facebook page, the front line, but you could send a message to someone there and Absolutely. we hope it's helping someone today. So um, my husband will pray us out. Absolutely. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come on here tonight and to share this message. Father, we pray now and hope that your people would uh, hear your word and hear this message and it would be a seed that falls on good ground. Mm -hmm. Father, we come against every 
uh, 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 evil and wicked spirit that tries to come yeah. contrary against this message in the lives of your people. Yeah. Father, we pray right now that they would embrace you and embrace the help that comes through your Holy Spirit to yes. help them to be delivered from any um, word of error, yeah. any past uh, hurts, and any obstructions of, of the past or rejection, any messaging that would be in their minds and hearts right now that is preventing them from increasing in the area of their romance and their sex life as a married couple. Father, we bind any yes. wicked plan, plot, and scheme of the enemy to hinder their, their life in this area. Yes. And we send it to the abyss now in the name, name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Father, we speak freedom yes. over their uh, marriage and sex life and romance. Yes. We speak freedom and, and abundance over their intimacy and yes. their connection and, 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 and their ability to to become one in this area, Lord yes. God. We come against the spirit of uh, Leviathan and the spirit of Jezebel. Oh, yes. We come, so Lord so God, so against so every so wicked so and so evil so spirit and rebuke so it so now and bind them to the abyss in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father, that there would be a spirit of collaboration, a of care, a spirit of unity and a spirit of love that overwhelms them, Lord God, so that they can send or dispatch 10,000 angels to yes. flight on behalf of their marriage and yes. their relationship and their family. We now thank you, Lord God, that this message would continue to reap a harvest in the in the families and in the marriages and in the lives that hear it right now and we pray father that they would increase in intimacy and that they would find the time lord god that you would give sources father to be able to invest and grow this area of their marriage yes, we just bless you now and give you glory honor and praise for this opportunity and for this message and may their relationship and marriage give Honor and glory, glory to, to you, name. Father. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You guys have a blessed night. We love you. We yes. hope this message was a blessing. Uh, uh, share it if it's helpful to you. And once again, you can follow us on YouTube. If you haven't um, uh, liked our YouTube page, it's um, Joel and Sherilyn Ross on YouTube. And there's so much uh, free resources on YouTube for you to be able to continue to grow in this area all right we love you have well, a blessed night and we'll see you next time